Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's SANS webcast, Managing and Showing Value During Red Team Engagements and Purple Team Exercises. My name is Carol Ott of SANS. Today's featured speakers are George Ortiz and Phil Wainwright. If during the webcast you have any questions for our presenters, please enter them into the questions window at any time. Please note that this webcast is being recorded and a copy of the slides and recording of this webcast will be available for viewing later today and can be found on the SANS registration page. And with that, I'd like to hand the webcast over to George. Thank you very much, Carol. And hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy to be here. Uh, we are going to share some awesome knowledge with you, some knowledge that you will be able to use immediately after this webcast is over. We're going to talk about managing and more importantly, showing value during and after your red team engagements and purple team exercises. I'm joined by Phil from Security Risk Advisors, who we've been working together probably two years now on Vector and being one of the bigger users of Vector, giving feedback and really working together to um, make this even better for you. So we are very excited to be here to share this with you. And uh, we've actually probably been talking about this webcast for two to three months now um, as a new version of Vector was released. So I am George Orchillas. I am the Chief Technology Officer of Scythe. I'm also the co-creator of the C2 matrix, which is the command and control matrix. I'll talk about that shortly. I am a SANS certified instructor. I teach the pen test curriculum. So Security 560, shout out to all of you with G-Pens and Security 504, shout out to those with GCIHs. I'm also the author of a two-day course, Security 564, Red Team Exercises and Adversary Emulations. We're actually gonna be giving a quick demo of that. Um, a few slides straight from the course and the course also covers vector. So uh, you, you will see a, a lot there. I was a 10 year veteran at City leading the offensive security team. I worked as part of the Common Vulnerability Scoring System uh, working group and also a voting member for version three and 3.1, which is the most recent. I helped co-author a framework for doing red team engagements. It's called the Thread-Led Penetration Testing Framework for uh, regulatory use in the financial industry space. Also a big fan of ISSA. Shout out to all the ISSA members out there. Um, was privileged to get the ISSA fellow designation uh, just last year. I'm also an NSI technology technologist fellow. And with me today, I have Phil. How are you doing, Phil? Doing very well, George. Uh, yeah, great to be here uh, talking about Vector today. Uh, just in terms of, of overall background, uh, George, it's been a while since we had a chance to actually meet in person uh, back at the, the Sands Purple Team Summit in uh, 2019. So that was, you know, really, really excellent event. Uh, looking forward to, uh, to, to, to this year's, um, whether it's in virtual fashion or, or physical, but yeah, really great event. Uh, so in terms of background, uh, hi, everyone, uh, and thanks, Sands, for, for having me today. Uh, I'm a director at Security Risk Advisors. Uh, my main focus, I've been doing information security, cybersecurity consulting for roughly 15 years. Uh, my background is mostly in pen testing, red teaming, application security, uh, cloud security, other areas. Uh, as of the past, you know, seven or eight years, I've been getting more into the, the concept of adversary simulation and purple teaming, you know, goes by a, a couple of different names, which you've probably heard George talk about quite a bit. Um, and really this, you know, back back in really not too long ago, really this this was happening more in spreadsheets. It was fairly uh, not not super well managed. Um, and we we certainly learned a lot, gave us inspiration to really start building uh, a platform that allows better collaboration, better sharing, uh, better planning and, and metrics. Uh, so I, I also actively work on the Vector team. I work with a, a very talented group of developers. Uh, yeah, you know, working on the platform, continuously adding new features, taking feedback from from the community and our own team. Uh, so we're really excited where Vector is going. Uh, ho hopefully, you know, we want to make this make today really interactive with the demo, and we also have uh, more information in the slides as, as more of a lead behind. Awesome! Thank you, Phil, for being here and taking the time 
Um, so just real quick, I'm going to do the way we're going to do is just cover the course a little bit because Vector is featured in the course. Uh, it comes in the virtual machine that uh, we give students. We give students a Windows 10 virtual machine and a slingshot. Uh, if you're familiar with the SANS slingshot, it now has Vector, uh, which is great. And um, we actually cover this in the course. So this is really um, a, a demo of the class where you learn how to do professional red team exercises and adversary emulations. It's 50% hands-on and 50% uh, lecture. So we spend quite a bit of time actually doing a class-long adversary emulation. We emulate APT33. Uh, we gather cyber threat intelligence around them and we go against a target organization. There's eight virtual machines, so it's a, it's a jam-packed two days, uh, the famous SANS fire hose effect. So real quick, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna talk for about 10 minutes, just kind of introing if you've never done red teams or never done purple teaming, I'm gonna cover what that is. And then we will spend the rest of the time with Phil showing the latest version of Vector and doing live demos. So um, like anything, we'll start with definitions, just make sure we're all talking the same language. We'll cover frameworks and methodologies. If you are going to build this professionally, you should follow a methodology. We're gonna cover the importance of cyber threat intelligence, planning an adversary emulation, actually emulating an adversary, and then showing value. And that's where I'm gonna hand it over to Phil. So real quick here, we can't have a red team talk without debating the definition of red teaming. And I like the red team journals definition, which is that red team is the practice of looking at a problem or situation from the perspective of an adversary. And really the difference here from other types of offensive and ethical hacking type of assessments is that we are testing not only technology, but people process and technology. Our customers also different. We're not really finding vulnerabilities on products. Our customer is the blue team. And what is the blue team? Well, the blue team are the defenders. We love our defenders. We want to work with them and really block attacks and stop attacks. And generally in an organization, you have a security operations center or maybe a managed security service provider. You may have a hunt team, you might have an incident response team or forensics. Really, I'll debate that anyone in an organization is really the blue team. Because if you get an email, even if you're in accounting, you should report that email. And humans are the best sensors. So that's the blue team. Adversary emulation is a type of red team engagement. And there are many types of red team engagements. Adversary emulation is the one where we understand how an adversary operates we map to the same tactics, techniques, and procedures they, use, they do, and we emulate those. That means we actually go out and try to do the same thing against a target organization. This brings a lot of value to that organization because they can measure if they are ready for a real attack. And lastly, here on definitions, we cover the purple team. I know we're very creative in information security, right? Where did the name come from? Well, you mix red and blue and you get purple, right? Um, and a purple team is a function or a virtual team where the red and the blue team work together. See, a lot of red team engagements are what we call zero knowledge to the blue team. The blue team isn't aware of this. In a purple team engagement, they are. And what we do is we present a particular attack chain or scenario and we emulate that in front of our defenders, in front of the blue team. And then they can go more efficiently and tune their security devices to make sure that they can catch uh, those particular TTPs when they come together. So purple teaming is fairly new. Um, Phil mentioned uh, that time we met was actually the inaugural purple team summit. So SANS did that last year. We're gonna be doing one this year as well and of course we'll invite all of you to that because it is very valuable and just shows how our organization and our industry has matured so for the course there's a lot of frameworks i cover a lot of them i personally co-authored one of them but at a high level we learn about threat intelligence we then plan the exercise 
we test and then we do exercise closure, which is really going to be most of our focus today. From a threat intelligence space, uh, we do need to leverage that in adversary emulations. We want to understand the target organization. We want to identify a adversary that has the opportunity, intent, and capability to attack the target organization. And every organization is different. We then gather threat intelligence. We extract the tactics, techniques, and procedures. We analyze and organize that, and then we create an adversary emulation plan. So this was uh, derived actually from another SAN summit where Katie Nichols and Cody Brown, who were both at MITRE at the time, uh, published this. So thank you to um, you all. And we have continued to use this uh, process that MITRE created. And MITRE, of course, mandatory MITRE attack matrix slide, uh, where we use this as one of the main frameworks, at least the testing framework, because it is a common language. It stands for adversaries, tactics, techniques, and common knowledge and allows cyber threat intelligence who's providing us information about an adversary the red team who's emulating an attack and the blue team that's defending to all speak the same language so in the planning phase we cover a lot of things we cover what triggers an exercise what are the objectives because just like adversaries your red team engagement or purple team exercises have objectives you have a scope you have trusted agents. If you're doing a zero knowledge um, assessment, then while the blue team and responders on the ground do not know it, there's certain people in the organization that should know it. We cover roles and responsibilities and roles of engagement. One of the things I do want to highlight here um, is assumed breach. And that is a philosophy and understanding that your organization will be breached, right? Eventually, you're going to have a vulnerability that you didn't patch quick enough. So somehow, some new exploit worked, right? And we have plenty of classes on that. Same with social engineering. Someone is going to fall for some social engineering attack and might execute a payload. So one of the things that we're seeing more and more in consulting companies and even internal red teams is operating under that philosophy. So if you saw in MITRE attack, initial access is only one of the various tactics. We want to spend more time what if what happens next. A uh, big shout out to Mike Saunders and Tim Medine from Red Siege. They have an awesome presentation on Assume Breach, and I really think you should uh, leverage that in your organizations. Uh, this is a quick slide on roles and responsibilities. Um, Phil, uh, Philip, uh, on Twitter asked me about this the other day. He's running or uh, building a new red team. And uh, just a quick highlight here is to have a project manager or an exercise coordinator. Most of the time you're going to try to do this as a red team lead or red team manager. You should really have an exercise coordinator because there's a lot of moving parts. Then for red team planning, you need to fill all the gaps that the cyber threat intelligence did not provide. Who are you going to fish? How are you going to fish them? Who are you going to social engineer? You need to set up attack infrastructure, set up command and control, perform that reconnaissance, weaponize, and then you get to the testing. One of the things we cover is the C2 matrix. It's a command and control matrix. It is a list. There's 48 C2s documented there. And really, the reason we do this is because you don't just want to test with one tool, right? You want to test with all of these, especially if they are open source or if they're freely available, you should definitely test the tools. But what we really want to get to in these tests is the TTPs, the attack behavior. So this is a quick screenshot of the C2 matrix. We have a SANS slingshot C2 matrix edition that comes with eight of these C2s already installed. So you can actually download this VM. It brings vector as well. I believe we have version 5.5.7. So you can get started literally after this call and test some of these things in your lab. So um, with that, um, let's talk about showing value, which is the last part of the course. Um, it's about a fourth of day two. And we do spend a lot of time because the entire reason you're doing a red team or a purple team engagement is to bring value to the target organization, right? We're not just going full cyber and breaking everything, getting in 
and leaving a report behind and laughing in people's face and leaving. That's wrong, right? And I know some people do that, but that's wrong. You should not do that. You need to work together. We're all in this together. So one of the methods of doing this is with vector. And I'm gonna turn it over to Phil to just cover a couple slides before we just do demo the rest of this webcast. Hey, thanks, George. Uh, yeah, so what is Vector? Uh, Vector is, is really a free core platform that you can you can start using today for planning of both you know red team assessments, purple team assessments, uh, adversary emulation, other custom types of assessments you might be getting into, like hey, how what does our cloud environment look like? What kind of parity do we have between our on-prem and cloud environments? Uh, so really there's a big focus on, on that purple team concept, uh, true collaboration between red team operators, uh, you know, pretty much anybody on your InfoSec team, connecting all those roles, uh, really promoting education. So, you know, I don't know how many pen tests, red teams you've probably seen or just, you know, very red reports by the, by the nature of them. Um, with very little knowledge sharing on, okay, what, what do the actual TTPs look like? What do the tools, what do the actual command lines look like? Um, what should we be looking for in our SIM and our EDR tools and, and elsewhere? Uh, so Vector is really meant to, to provide that level of sharing and, and you know, as much transparency as you can possibly uh, do within your organization. And we've also seen, so originally, you know, purple teaming is, is a major use case for, for Vector. We've seen a lot of increased interest from Threat Intel uh, groups in particular, um, really different functions, and, and you know we're increasingly adding more both red team planning, tracking capabilities, but also increasing uh, the value of vector to blue teamers. Um, so providing more uh, more information, like hey, what are some useful detection rules, analytics to get started with fixing some of these problems. Uh, so so based on the framework you outlined, George, I think you know the the core concepts really um, tie in very well to vector and and what we're looking to do. Go to the next one. Uh, so common use cases, uh, alignment to MITRE ATT&CK Enterprise is a very big one. Um, yeah, many of you are probably actively working on this or have been for some time. Some are still initial and getting started, but we want Vector to have as much alignment to ATT&CK as a, you know, a common for, for common terminology, taxonomy, for how you're tracking and measuring your progress uh, across your organization. Uh, we want Vector to really promote, you know, unlike a red team, which is meant to be a lot more stealthy, really providing a structured methodology. Um, so forcing some documentation uh, as part of that knowledge share. Uh, we've all, we also use it a lot for just doing POC evaluations for tools. Um, and of course, by the nature of purple teaming, a lot of those tools are, are the live ones in your environment. Um, just looking to get a sense of, okay, how, how good is our SIM doing? How good is our, is our behavioral anomaly detection? Whatever that, that detection control might be. Uh, some other major use cases really uh, using Vector as really a CTI back platform. So a way to uh, directly bring in great content from places like MITRE, uh, Red Canaries, Atomic Red, so really great third-party open source projects that you can uh, pull in and, and start using right away. And uh, another one here, just the idea of creating good templates. So everything in Vector is kind of organized um, at, at a, you can have major assessment groups, uh, logical groupings of campaigns, and then individual test cases that uh, make up those campaigns. Um, really what we're big on is making Vector a very useful test case tracking tool that can be used for a lot of different purposes. So being able to save off those types of templates, um, replaying those, you know, across different uh, different business units, different geos that you have. Um, so promoting re really a repeatable methodology uh, that you can continually evolve over time. And of course, reporting, I uh, will show you a lot of the reporting dashboards in Vector, um, really showing, okay, we did this one red team exercise, but now we've done five purple team exercises, um, a bunch of other custom assessments. Um, how do you visualize all that data, uh, drill down into areas of interest to, to really prioritize and, and frankly show management what, what your program looks like, uh, help to justify uh, investments in sometimes new or better tools and, and personnel needed to, to meet your mission. Uh, so getting started, uh, this is the last slide I have. Uh, you can check out Vector at our at our GitHub page. 
Uh, also check out the, the documentation site for additional guidance on installation and, and usage. Uh, you can sign up for the community. We have a mailing list where um, we're, we're not too spammy here. We, we generally reserve that for major releases and to provide a preview of any major upcoming features that, that we're working on. Um, and as usual, you know, feel free to reach us uh, anytime at Vector at SRAIO. Um, we, we've you know, really been very appreciative of all the feedback that's come in so far with the community. We have a, a great laundry list of items that we've added to the roadmap. So uh, definitely con contact us there if you want to discuss anything in more detail. All right, George, so I can uh, start presenting here. Yep, I'm making you presenter now. And just FYI, I am monitoring the questions, so you've actually probably already seen me respond to some of them. So as Phil does the demo, feel free to ask other questions. Um, we will leave maybe five, 10 minutes at the end if you have any questions for us. And we have one here that I actually don't know the answer to, Phil. And that question is, is this the same Phil that authored the Oracle Security publication? That's that's not something I like to talk about. <laughs> at, at least, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, uh, that was in another life. Yeah, yeah, it was a uh, Oracle 10G. So if you ever if you ever need some nighttime reading material, um, but I think a lot of the concepts are probably still pretty relevant to Oracle security. But yeah, that's that's a blast from the past. Uh, I'm not sure who who. Uh, you raise the question but <laughs> <laughs> yep that is funny awesome so uh we can see your screen so go ahead we'll uh do demo now all right great uh so this is coming through uh like i mentioned previously uh you know vectors really made up of uh, really the, the main hierarchy is you have assessments which are a little bit more comprehensive uh in this example you're looking at the the overall reporting dashboard you can see we have four sample what we'd call major purple team exercises that are that are roughly six months apart. Uh, we also have a number of different report types that are here. Uh, so what you're looking at is is the metrics view. Uh, one more just conceptual thing to notice. We also have a number of different databases that we're going to jump into. Um, so at the highest level of the hierarchy, everything in vector is organized in a database. Uh, so you can think of this as really the top level org unit. Um, some vector users out there have different databases for different team functions. So maybe red team, thread intel teams uh, want to keep their assessments separate from a reporting standpoint. Uh, some organizations just have a single database that, that is meant to house all of your assessments for more, more unified reporting. Uh, so we're in the SANS demo now. Uh, what you're looking at here, uh, the assessment dashboard, you see these major assessment activities that we have uh ring going back to to q1 in 2019 uh so everything in vector is you know you can generally just click around by by hitting a row and jumping right into that view um what you see here is is a sample purple team assessment um underneath of that you see a number of logically grouped campaigns uh so these names are are pretty intuitive but if you're looking to do very controlled testing of something like credential dumping you know, we've created a campaign for that, uh, which takes you into the campaign dashboard. Uh, here you see a nice, nice visual uh, heat map so that this visual um, can be more useful when you're doing more typical red team style escalation path attacks. Uh, in this case, we're really strictly just testing down the credential access tactic. Uh, so underneath of that, this is where you can load up the individual test cases. Uh, so those are easy to launch. You can just click on the row. Uh, this will bring up the detailed test case panel. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see, uh, I think the, the colors would imply that the left side is really meant to, to describe more of the red team TTPs. Um, so attack, when did the red team actually start, stop, and attack? Uh, what are the timestamps? Uh, what actual attacker source are they coming from? Uh, this could al also be something like your external command and control infrastructure, if it's more of an external attack. Uh, what tools are we using? So a very familiar one uh, that you all know, I'm sure, Mimikatz. Uh, the target assets that we're actually going after, maybe it's a, a loaner laptop that you're looking to just beat up as much as possible during a, a purple team assessment. 
Uh, it might also be just a live target somewhere in, in your environment. Uh, so what you see here, really the, the core of a test case, this is really the, you know, an atomic, the, the smallest unit of testing in vector. Um, a description, so this is the unique test case procedure, the test case variation that you're looking to demonstrate. Uh, the actual technique, uh, in this case, credential dumping. Uh, this is something where we actually have uh, an autocomplete for MITRE techniques. Um, you know, so uh, across the industry and, and our own usage, we're not calling credential dumping, you know, five different things. So nice little autocomplete there. And the phaser tactic, uh, another important concept in vector. Uh, by default, we use more of a, a unified kill chain view. I, I would say a minimal unified kill chain. Uh, so if you're interested in using, uh, you know, more traditional Lockheed style kill chain or a Mandian attack lifecycle phase, um, or just MITRE tactics, you have the ability to actually create custom kill chains and make those the defaults across your assessments. Uh, down here, operator guidance. Uh, so in this case, it might be, hey, use Cobalt Strike to run this uh, pre-built command that you can launch. Um, in some cases, the operator guidance might be very specific uh, command line arguments that you can run and, and really codify for reuse across your environment for more continuous controls, retesting efforts. Over on the blue team panel, uh, you see the basic outcomes. So in this case, we've we've just done something uh, not so stealthy, like drop drop mini cats to disk. Um, you can see we've noted this this activity is blocked. Actually, our our legacy AV product was able to detect this um, versus a more advanced EDR suite. Um, but you can toggle everything. will start in the TBD status. If something is blocked, there we have some sub outcomes available. Uh, so in some cases, you know, if it's your mail gateway, you probably don't want an alert every time, uh, you know, a bad email is, is blocked. That would be, you know, millions of alerts. However, uh, you know, in some cases, if something is blocked, if you receive an alert, that can be very valuable intel to, to the SOC to, to start an investigation of, of what was blocked. Uh, similar to detection, we have, you know, basically a, a basic severity level all the way from informational up to critical. Uh, so one thing that we, we often find in, in purple teaming is, you know, oftentimes, you know, technically a lot of activities might get detected, set off some alert, but only if, you know, the security admin, the sysadmin is actually staring in the SIM console. Uh, so this is meant to be really an honest rating of, okay, this clearly should be a high risk, but, but was it really more of a low or medium that nobody would have kicked off any kind of uh, incident response playbook for? And with something not detected, uh, a useful sub-outcome, uh, if it wasn't detected, then, hey, do we, have, do we have endpoint visibility, telemetry, logs for whatever that was? Uh, so this can be a very useful sub-outcome to further drill down into, um, especially when it comes to tackling remediation for, hey, we can quickly, we can get some quick wins in our ADR and our SIM because we actually have the logs. We just need to configure some alerts and, and do some testing. Uh, over here, just a couple more things on the test case panel. Uh, this is really what we expect to be the, the core defense for whatever the, the test case might be. Um, it might be a single, hey, we really think EDR is the only thing that's going to catch this. Uh, there might be a couple of tools that, that play together. Um, so if you're ingesting your EDR events to your SIM, you might expect your SIM to set off the right alarm that would actually kick off uh, the right process with, with security operations. So all of this, a lot of what you see, all these, these toggles, these are fully customizable. So if you don't like the detection layers, defensive layers that are in vector, um, you can fully customize those to, to more suitable ones to, to your liking. And just down here, we have some additional you know, detection prevention guidance for, for the test case procedure, and also the ability to upload local evidence files. Uh, if you wanted to provide more formal tracking of alerts and. Uh, emails and things of that nature related to the test. So that is a test case panel in a nutshell. Uh, something else in Vector that's that's very useful is, is the tagging system. Uh, so this is something that you also have a lot of control over. Um, tags can be applied at a test case level um, and globally throughout the system. So something you can use and come up with your own criteria. Maybe it's remediation scales. 
it could be threat actor groups, it could be internal teams that are actually maybe responsible for investigating something. Uh, so some other features here, not gonna get into too much detail here, but say you have a test case procedure and, and you know, by the nature of adversary emulation and, and this type of testing, um, you have the ability to basically clone test cases on the fly and create different variations, save them off, but inherit you know, most of the base properties of that test. Uh, so that makes it easier for teams just to uh, you know, innovate on the fly, do additional defensive evasion and, and try something new and, and record it. So move on here. So this is the, yeah, the campaign dashboard in a nutshell. Uh, jump back into our reporting view. Uh, so this is really more, more of a unified view in that you can jump around into the different uh, different major report types. Uh, you can see we actually have an assessment here that is queued up and ready to go. We, have, we haven't actually run through that test, so everything is still in a TBD status. Uh, but part of this unified reporting dashboard gives you the ability to drill down into very specific assessments or even at a specific campaign level and just see that data. And if I just wanted to see a single result test, I can drill down into just Q1 2019, see what that snapshot looked like. Uh, further down, some high-level stats. Uh, these these actual these would be your actual tool names that you've configured in Vector for your environment. Uh, these have been uh, I've just made generic names for them, but you know your your common, your sim, your EDR, your firewall platform, DLP if you have one, maybe other other controls that might come into play on the perimeter, like WAF products, uh, your secure email gateway. Um, so these are common platforms you would expect to get pretty good coverage on, um, especially if you're doing more, more testing aligned to attack. Uh, we have other views here, more, more drill down views, but just at a high level, you know, how are you looking uh, across major phases or, or tactics and improving over time? And further down here, just at more of a campaign level, or specific phases, what is the relative maturity looking like? Uh, some other views that are really useful, this test case drill down view. Uh, so this can be really aggregated like, like the other major reporting views available. Uh, this is more of a power user view where you can search for anything of interest. So if we wanted to look for, hey, what have we done around PowerShell? In this this assessment scope, you can do some quick searches here. Uh, you can also fully open up any of the test case panels from here as well, just by clicking. So that's just a quick way to do searches across larger data sets. Uh, show you the heat map view. So this is a our version of a of MITRE's attack heat map. Uh, really, the the goal of this, uh, you see, we have you know, the current version of attack. But we also have, if you see the numbers here, we also have the ability to drill down into these specific test case procedures that we've run through. So if I click on credential dumping, um, you can browse really everything you've done that's been mapped to that technique. Uh, so we think this is pretty powerful to be able to bring in any mix of assessment data that's been mapped to attack and be able to show, provide a quick answer of what relative coverage you might have. And this will be more aggregate too. So if I introduce the assessment that we haven't actually done yet, you can see we'll have a number of more test cases that are still in TBD status. Uh, so there's a couple of useful filters here. Uh, we have a way to basically deduplicate some some more repeat activities that you might have. So if I switch this map type to latest, give it a second to load here. So you can see we, we've deduplicated a lot of our tests and we're only showing the most recent status uh, for different test cases that we've run. Uh, so up here, we also have a number of other filters that you can leverage. Uh, so these are the MITRE filters where 
if you need to produce a top-down view of, hey, how how is our what are our defenses, current defenses looking like against something like APT41? Uh, I can select that, search for that threat group, apply the filter. You see we've applied a, a tag here for active filters. Uh, and this is an important concept too. You can actually click on these to filter out different, different statuses. Uh, so this no test case coverage means it's a perfectly valid technique that is attributed to APT41 but we don't have any current test coverage in the system. Uh, so Bill, this would show you, if you don't mind, yeah. let me give a quick example. If you go back to selecting the uh, different APTs, um, many of you might have re recall in January, feels so long ago, of 2020, um, we started the year off with the assassination of Soleimani, who is an Iranian uh, military. Um, and the first question we got like January 2nd or 3rd was who are these Iranian threat actors and what can they do? And we were able to answer this question for a lot of senior level um, personnel in our organization with Vector doing this exact filtering. So we didn't actually have to go emulate anything new. We actually had tested a lot of those and were able to give a quick snapshot of where we had gaps, where we didn't have gaps, and allowed our senior management to make a more informed decision as to what the immediate action should be given this new heightened uh, threat actor and possibility of attack. So just want to give that quick example there, Phil. Sorry to uh, interrupt. Thanks, George. Yeah, while you were saying that, I, I actually applied oil rig, which is one of the more more prominent actors, uh, part of the part of that group. Uh, so that would give you the answer of, you know, based on what you've done, what what relative coverage do you have? Yep, and what coverage do you need to test as well? Um, because as you see on this screen, there's actually a lot that might not have been tested. Uh, so you might want to prioritize those tests, given that a particular threat actor uh, now has the intent to attack your organization. Great. So just to close out the heat map discussion here, I've, I've just zoomed in on the latest major assessment that was completed. Um, like I said, with the inactive, if you don't want to show all of the tech, hopefully you're not trying to, to conquer the, the entire framework uh, overnight, but just focusing on the work that you have done. Um, this would show you a snapshot in time, and you're also able to export the images uh, as, as a PNG, which can be useful for dropping in presentations and other, other, other uses like that. So that is the heat map. Uh, we have a lot of lot of useful filters in here. Uh, I want to show you the historical trending view. Let me pick some actual data to trend. Yeah, and this is the part where you can show. This is um, I put this on LinkedIn. If anyone saw that post um, about two years ago, my CISO at City came and said, I, I get this. I get all the value these red team engagements are, doing, are, are having on our organization, but I need a better way to show that we're actually improving, that by doing more red team engagements and then the soon uh, purple team engagements that we started doing about two years ago as well, how are we improving? And uh, if it wasn't for Phil and his team and Vector, this would have been a lot harder to answer. It's because of this historical uh, trending he's about to show. Great. Yeah, so what you see here, I zoomed out a little bit just to capture the subcharts. Uh, so in this case, we have, you know, on the y-axis, just major data points over time. Uh, so these, rep these basically map to the major assessment activities that you saw. Uh, you can click on them to see a snapshot in time of, hey, what did... What did our attack coverage look like in early 2019? Give this a second to load. Okay, so not good is the answer. Um, and as, as you click, say we'll, we'll fast forward to 2-3 of 2019, you can see significant enhancements were made on um, coverage and fast forward to early 2020. Um, the coverage of, you know, for, for the exact techniques that were tested has gotten much better over time. 
Uh, so some of these other other filters that you see too up, up in this lines box, you can apply uh, different tactics that you also want to trend. So is you know credential access are we getting better over time? Uh, these can be any phase or tactic that you're using. Uh, some other filters like at a defensive layer. So how is our sim actually getting better over the past few years based on the engineering work that we're doing, uh, or maybe some new, new tool acquisitions. Uh, so you see some of those filters have been applied here. Um, for a couple of those categories. Zoom back in a little bit. Um, so this is a, obviously a feature that gets more useful when you have a couple couple larger data sets where you could actually start to show some of the trending uh, in the mix. Show one or two more reporting views here. Uh, some others are a little bit more geared towards actual tool improvements and detection layers themselves. So you can see at the top, so specific tools like EDR and SIM, uh, down below the, the categories that those are mapped to. You know, you might have multiple SIM platforms, you might have multiple endpoint protection platforms. You also have a way to kind of see that at a higher level. The reporting views, I know we don't have a time to show everything here. I wanted to jump to another database though and show you some, some of the adversary emulation capabilities in Vector. Um, what I was showing you was more geared towards more, more typical purple team activities. Uh, going to this adversary emulation demo database, uh, you can see we've actually brought in a number of campaigns uh, directly from CTI sources. Uh, we have, you know, also leveraging the tagging system here to show, okay, we pulled oil rig directly from MITRE CTI. Um, there's some others that we've actually further enriched in the system. So I'll just click on APT41 as an example. We haven't actually filled out any data here yet, uh, but you can see this is something you can directly just import from MITRE's uh, attack uh, CTI project on GitHub. Uh, directly import this at least an initial for an initial emulation plan for APT 41. Uh, so you can see there's quite a lot here. You know, in our experience, this is a really great place to start. Um, and George, you can probably speak to this, but you know, a certain level of enrichment and um, maybe you know keeping it to really high priority TTPs across some of these APT groups can be helpful, especially with some of the threat intel gaps or maybe some broader techniques that are good and, and relevant, but maybe you don't want to tackle as part of your, your test plan. Yep, and we actually got a question about that. Uh, actually, a prior student that took 564 was asking, uh, you know, you create this adversary emulation plan, and do you actually have to stick exactly to it? Like, if we tried all the TTPs on the plan, can we deviate? And the answer is, of course you can, because an adversary would deviate as well. The adversary emulation plan is before you do it when you're presenting. This is what we plan to do. And if you go through it and you need to do another TTP, then it's as simple as just adding a new test case, documenting it, that you're doing this other TTP that was not part of the plan, and then the result and whatnot, and it will add to this. So you can actually have a, this was the plan, and then this was the final, um, actually what we tested uh, all through through here. Yeah, thanks, George. Yeah, and part of this too, what I'm showing now is just a, a TrickBot campaign that we've imported. Uh, so not everything needs to be specifically mapped to a threat group. It might be um, a, a very popular malware family ransomware activity um, where you also wanna follow more of an adversary emulation approach to running through. Um, and this is exactly the type of campaign that you know, your management might be asking about, uh, especially with ransomware focus. So I want to show some other use cases here, and then I want to just show you how to actually import, uh, take advantage of Vector's capabilities to import a lot of the CTI. Uh, one, jump to this cloud database real quick, just to show that you know Vector is not does not necessarily need to be all you know 90% Windows Enterprise focused and attack aligned. Uh, but what, what we're showing here is just something we've created more custom that is really just doing controlled AWS like threat simulation. 
um, insider testing, uh, you know, if somebody opened, exposed something to the internet, would, would you get the right alerts and, and shut that down? Uh, so I just wanted to show that if you're not doing direct testing map to attack, uh, Vector is a great platform for other types of other technologies, other platforms that you want to develop custom templates for. So over here, uh, just some of the things on the menu, uh, vendors and tools, uh, won't get into too much of this, but this is basically where you would go in and customize this inventory to the major detection, prevention, incident response tools in your environment that would dynamically show up in your test case panels. This is more of a, a kitchen sink version of that right now in our demo instance. Uh, defensive layers, so everything here has a lot, you know full CRUD capabilities. And then under administration, so this is where you manage those templates that you want to reuse and share with your peer groups and, and with the broader community. So you can see we have a number of, George mentioned the Iran bundle. This is something we, we actually released up on the, the Vector website on, on our GitHub. You can see in this Iran bundle, we included a number, roughly seven different groups, as well as some US CERT advisory information. It's just something you can grab and start to show uh, coverage against uh, potential TTPs there hitting your environment. And then campaign templates. Uh, so really, you can create a major group templates, which will house any number of campaigns that you want to add to it. So this is the managed campaigns view. You can see this is just an example of APT41 double dragon that we actually created from a, a Mandian threat report. There's also good good MITRE CTI for this. Um, there's different organizational sources uh, for, for attribution. So you can see which org created it. So this organization would probably be yours, or you would use wherever you know the source of wherever the content came from. Uh, anything here though. Um, Say something like APT41, your, t your threat intel team, your red team has done a lot of enrichment uh, on, on the initial CTI import. This is something you can save off and actually just export as a JSON file and, and reuse. Um, so that's a pretty, pretty powerful capability to, to have that level of enrichment and looking to get a lot more community participation into getting that and, and making it shareable via, via a taxi server. But I wanted to show you the import data down here. So this is where you can actually bring in uh, really good content that's out there. So here I'll just show you an example. We also have this, this drag and drop capability. Uh, what I'm pulling in now is literally just what we downloaded from uh, the MITRE CTI project under this enterprise attack. So make sure you download the raw bundle, uh, drop it in. Submit. Now, what this is doing is actually parsing out the entire Sticks2 bundle that MITRE uses to, to represent attack through various uh, Sticks objects and relationships. So you can see this is quite hefty. Um, we've parsed this out into 390 different campaigns and over 4,000 test cases. Uh, what you can do is you can certainly import everything if you want all those templates, uh, or you could just be very selective we'll pick something like APT41, hit submit. Here's our new campaign. You have your import date. This is just brought in from MITRE. You're able to just preview it here. This is now a full template that you can create an assessment, add this template, and start with your, your testing and, and tracking. Uh, something we actually recently added, if, if you've been using Vector for a while, we did have like an older Atomic Red uh, assessment template in there. We've recently made that path much better. Uh, so now you can actually download the latest Atomic Red index from, from their GitHub, import it, click submit. So this looks similar to the uh, to the attack enterprise import, where now we have we're importing the entire Atomic Red project. We can further preview and be more selective with what we bring in. Um, you can also see Atomic Red has started the map to MITRE sub techniques, which is great. Uh, so that's something we're also working on. You can certainly use sub techniques in your test cases. 
Uh, we don't have the a, a visualization for that yet until MITRE officially releases uh, that version and, and the CTI bundle for it. Uh, but you know, certainly very high priority on our roadmap. And I can show you what that looks like, just jumping to the Atomic example. I think I have a database here, okay, Atomic Red. So if you're just looking to get started with uh, general attack alignment, you can see all these campaigns are really broken out by, by tactic uh, for tracking. So you can go to something like execution and you have a very large number of test cases that you can start to run through. Uh, but the best part of this is when, you know, there's great updates to Atomic Red a month from now, you can also drop in that template and benefit from those updates in your, your assessment data and vector. Right, jump back to our SANS demo database. And uh, George, I don't know if we want to do a time check here. For uh, uh, you, you have about five more minutes. There's uh, a few questions queued up uh, for you. Um, and if you have more questions, please uh, post them and uh, we'll answer those in about five minutes. Great. And just to just to tie that together, uh, so we're back in our SANS demo database in terms of, OK, how do I actually create content from all these great templates that I brought in? Um, you can create a new sample assessment, call it test. Uh, from this template, you can now pick uh, from an existing assessment group. So, George, going back to your example, we'll look at the Iranian TTPs. Uh, we have this pre-built template that we brought in. You can see at the top here, we have the list of campaigns that are already a part of that group. Uh, so, it's really as simple as that. And now you have a, a structured way to start assessing against these different threat groups and, and breaking it up by by group. But we also added a lot a lot of new icons uh, to the system. So you, you should no longer be seeing the big big red bullseye uh, everywhere. So every every technique will have a default icon and, and we're working on adding some new ones to that as well. But in a nutshell that's how you would just go from just simply downloading MITRE's bundle importing in the vector, having some initial emulation plans that you can start to work with and, and further enrich. That's awesome. Um, can you make me a presenter again? So I show the last slide here and um, we'll jump to uh, Q&A. And again, if you have questions, please post them on here. I think uh, I've answered a lot of them. I have at least two here um, for Phil. Um, so you will see a screen up right now. Um, one of the questions is around uh, multi-user. And um, I, I, I answered it already, but for, for everyone else that, that's not reading the Q&A, um, the question was, let's suppose you have three red team operators in a cybersecurity area in a company. Do you recommend having this tool installed um, per operator or have a server and is there any multi-user um, and multi-tenancy availability on, on Vector? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, so we're actually, you can currently create multiple local users under the, the user admin if, if you're an admin role in Vector. Uh, so those are still local in scope now with, with some of the RBAC that's built in. Uh, we are very far along on a new auth server implementation that, that has full SSO. Uh, so that will support pretty much you know, open ID connect and SAML flows. So really should, should integrate with any major IDP uh, auth flow that you're using. And that will allow you to come in as a federated user, um, external versus local user, and also you know, additional role, role capabilities and with, within Vector itself. Uh, so the interesting part about that is we actually have a, a pretty pretty rich admin panel to configure the SSO settings for your environment. Uh, so we're we're hoping a lot of folks can take advantage of that to get up and running, and um, also importantly, be able to leverage uh, multi-factor authentication 
that's already required from, from your IDP. And we're also working on a local MFA solution too, if you prefer to just keep your vectors uh, local, uh, vector users local, not, not, have, not use LDAP. But that, that's a great question. And I don't, we don't have an exact ETA, but the development is uh, pretty far along, just needs a little bit more testing. Awesome. Um, another question here is, I saw vectors listed as free. Um, are there plans to make it open source? And then what really is the difference between free and open source? Another good question, yeah, and this has come up a lot. So the actual you know, vector is a free, free platform. Uh, the the code is not currently open source. Uh, so you know we're we'll debate if we ever want to make actually release the source code if that's something we think we can manage community contributions and and still maintain the, the software quality that we need um, with an open source project and, and stability. Uh, but yeah, currently, you know, we don't have plans to restrict any features of Vector. Uh, keep the platform free, use technologies like Docker and things that anybody can deploy. But yeah, yeah, the free platform, not not fully open source. Excellent. Um, got another question here. Um, I'll give it to you first and then I'll, I'll fill in blanks on my experience. But the question is, do you see using vector during red teams taking more time than normal to go through and document every step? It seems like a lot of information you need to supply into vector. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, so we, we've used vector in the past to basically import, like transcribe historical red team reports. Uh, and that's not a super fast process. There is there is more work required. Um, so unless you've already done a significant amount of planning, like put together an initial red team plan, emulation plan, mapped out different phases of the red team, which obviously you're going to need to deviate from by the nature of a red team. Yeah, that is something that, yeah, certainly you know, could slow progress on on a on a true red team engagement where you might want to, if you can't do it in real time, uh, you would you know you should be able to at least capture the the summary of TTPs coming out of that that you want to focus on. Yep. Uh, so what we've done too is when we've done our teams have done red teams and we want to bring it in the vector. Uh, we don't always exhaustively document you know hundreds of different activities that we did, but we will bring in key escalation paths that led from you know, initial access all the way to, to compromise, data exfiltration, uh, whatever, whatever the flags were. So we've been a little bit more selective with, okay, let's really just extract the high value TTPs that we need to get more visibility into or just vulnerabilities and defects that need to be fixed. George, you can probably talk yeah. about this for a while. Yep, so um, great, great question. A lot of red teamers don't like the ending part because of the reporting and then having to go back and looking through everything you did, right? A lot of these C2 frameworks and one of the columns we look at in the C2 matrix is logging, right? So personal opinion, but I think a lot of red teamers share it, is if you spend the time early, but in the planning phase, and a lot of people think that red teaming is just the testing, the whole planning phase actually sometimes even takes longer than the actual testing. But one, as Phil said, it gives you a good adversary emulation plan that you can present before it gets approved. For example, if you need budget or if you need to prove that, you know, if you're a consultant that you actually have a plan and you're not just, you know, going to go break stuff. So doing it early is great, um, especially in red team engagements, but really the value um, that we found was in purple team exercises. Because when you're planning the TTPs that you're going to emulate in the exercise, you don't wanna spend time or do TTPs that are gonna be blocked or do TTPs that have absolutely no visibility on. So um, as Phil showed, if you create the plan, you can have the expected tool and behavior so we kind of tabletop it with the senior managers, the SOC manager, the incident response manager, as we choose what TTPs we're going to do live during the purple team engagement. And then that's 
testing assumptions, right? A core of red teaming is we assume that this is going to get blocked. You have mapped that as such. Then you go and test it. Doing and documenting the result is much quicker and less time consuming if you created the plan ahead of time. So I would also say always, always, always do it ahead of time. And with that, it is right at the end of uh, the talks, 1130 Eastern here. Um, I want to thank you, Phil, for uh, coming on and all the awesome work you've done on Vector and, and continue to support it uh, as a free tool. We all appreciate that. And I believe Carol's on to say some closing statements. All right. <clears throat> thank you so much, Phil and George, for your great presentation, which helps bring this content to the SANS community. To our audience, we greatly appreciate you listening in. For a schedule of all upcoming and archived SANS webcasts, including this one, please visit sans.org forward slash webcasts. Until next time, take care, and we hope to have you back again for the next SANS webcast. Thanks, everyone.